Hello, Chris and Nikki. Thank you for coming on to have a chat. It's um, super exciting. Um, our second husband and wife couple to come on. And uh, yeah, it's so cool to see how people can do it together and make it happen from all walks of life. We're just saying it's it's incredible just who picks this up and it makes sense and they, they rock it. So I can't wait to hear your story. So yeah, thanks for having a chat today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. So you guys are in um, Bigger Valley, New South Wales. We're actually in the same time zone, which is so exciting for me. It's usually some crazy thing trying to work out times with other people on the other side of the world. So, yeah. Um, on a farm, you were saying. That's so cool. You, so you moved from Sydney to a green a green uh, tree change to take over a 100-acre farm. It's pretty crazy. It was certainly, uh, yeah, certainly a big, a big step. Um, you know, coming from a tiny patch of suburbia to uh, chooks and ducks and pigs and and veggie gardens and orchards and you know, it's a yeah, it was it was a big eye opener. That's so cool. That's and from a graphic design business background, so you obviously had some technical knowledge that obviously fell into this pretty well because I'll just show the the leaderboard. Um, you you popped up and um, Chris lost twenty four point five pounds, which is like ten point five kilo, which is huge in six weeks. And um, Nikki did incredibly as well. And then in terms of um, fat loss, um, you both did really well. And then the nutrient intake score, you both made it to the leaderboard which is quite a difficult thing to do especially for the first time around and um yeah it's just really cool to see you guys just smashing it with amazing nutrient scores and and what you've done here with filling all in all those harder to find nutrients is incredible and it's cool that you've done it together so yeah just be good to um talk about that journey this is your your belt that you shared at the end uh, that must be a bit of a milestone to What's your story of, of you know? Obviously, had a, a life of being a bit bigger and um, yeah. so you're get, get a bit skinnier, and this was the moment. I think I've had that belt for probably about about twenty years. Um, it was given to me when I was probably at my biggest, which was probably around about one hundred and sixty kilo mark, many many years ago. Wow. And you know, I lost lost a bit of weight for a while um, and trimmed off the, about. Yeah, about a foot on on the on the actual belt uh, quite some time ago, and that those those holes you see that that were already in that picture, they were ones. That's basically where I got down to at my at my lowest before you know before the masterclass, and where the green one is was where I was when I started the masterclass. So I put a bit of weight back on yeah. prior to starting yeah. the class, yeah. and that was I think that was a, a couple of weeks to go before the end of the masterclass. I needed to put another hole in. And only about four days ago, out of necessity, I grabbed a, uh, a steak knife out of the kitchen and added another one. So it's um, yeah, it, it's it, and to the to the point where it, the reason it was out of necessity is because I don't have a pair of pants that actually sit on my waist anymore. They just fall down if I don't. So you know, it's not a good look in public. <laughs> Although you did participate in Naked Gardening Day the other day, I saw on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, but um, you know, there, there is obviously a little bit of uh, digital editing to uh, to make it uh, to make it not make myself not get arrested. You know. Plus, we don't have neighbours. <laughs> yeah. So nobody. Gets it. <laughs> Living on a hundred acres is uh, there's there's been times when you when you do something, you know, think about it like. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I remember there was a there was a photo one morning. I'd um I. I'd, Looked out the window and there was a rabbit out there, which I kind of just popped off with the uh, and, and went and collected it in my Crocs and my undies. <laughs> and it was kind of like Nikki snapped the photo of it, and I went, "Yeah, I wouldn't have done that at the other place. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have done that in suburban Sydney. That's no, great. Not quite. That's a cracker. Welcome to Australia. <laughs> That's um, it. <laughs> <laughs> Rural Australia. Um, yeah, so so how you, you were saying before you were used to tracking food because you'd been low carb and then you came into this, but it was a bit of a, a step change from just tracking macros to to tracking micros, I suppose. But you understood micros and, and micronutrients and why they were important because you're out there growing amazing food and making amazing food. So it's sort of 
conceptually made sense. You sort of picked it up quite quickly in terms of that. But how is it? How is it a learning curve? What did you have to learn to to, to step it up? Um, you know, like what was it? Yeah, eight years ago, seven eight years ago, we uh, we learned about low carb, high fat, and and yep. we learned about macros. Yep. With the masterclass, we actually learned about micros. We weren't mm. really focused on them at yeah, all yeah, yeah. prior to this. Like, you know, you hear about your recommended daily intake requirements of this and that, but what does that mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah it means nothing that, until you really. look at, um, the whole, look at the whole what you're getting in your food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we knew um, nutrient rich food was important yeah. but um you know and trying to get all that from real food mm. but as far as measuring it mm. we wouldn't have had a clue yeah and, and it's only uh, once you measure it you understand what you're actually getting now and what you can do to improve it and yeah, you guys both rocked it so how did how did it go i love it like for us as a family it's been you've got to do it as a family and and like you see with all the people with type 1 diabetic kids it can't be that the parents are chowing down on doritos while the kids have to eat something completely different it's got to be the whole family that changes so how is it doing it as a as a, as a couple that's it's a really big thing like when we went low carb and we were showing our weight loss journey and you know I lost 40 kilos and put it out there. And wow. put How did you do that? And some people, some friends jumped on board and did it, but really yep. struggled because their partner was going, I'm not having a bar at that. I'm not getting rid of my, getting rid of my bagels and my bread and my chips and my, you know, whatever. So they're, oh, I can't yep. do that. So I have to have my rice and pasta. Yeah. So it, that made it really hard because they were having to do mm. separate meals. And, and, and I, I sort of saw that and went, we're really lucky that we both mm. jumped on then, realised the importance of it. And then we both did the masterclass together um, and Back low carb days, my kids didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> was, eat what we eat, or you have to go shopping and cook it yourself. <laughs> it's really. easy when mum's the cook. Exactly, but this time round, it, it's just the two of us, so mm, yeah. it's um, it was a lot easier. But having said that, we did prepare separate meals. Okay. Through the yeah. masterclass, because we're too. You, you don't. One of you isn't the main cook that cooks mainly for the other one, or you sort of do your own thing. And you sort of not, sort of healthy competition the in there. Yeah, not not during the masterclass. It was okay. especially. It was very much. We would do our own thing because we had our own different requirements for for nutrient levels. Like oh, wow. uh, early on, in the, early on in it. Um, Nikki would make a meal for both of us and and or we'd pretty much eat the same thing, same meal throughout the day. Um, and no would tell us mine would be eight or ten points lower in the score. Yep. The same meal, same foods throughout the day. So yep. because my, my requirements were different, even if I ate more of that meal, yeah. it would be different. So we worked out yeah, in wow. the early stages, let's just do our own thing and, you know, see, see, <laughs> make, make the best person win. <laughs> <laughs> so was there a bit of healthy was there, was there a bit of healthy competition there between you to see yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's great that's so cool yeah. it, it was yeah. one of those things where it was kind of like um you know we, we'd sit down there after afterwards and go, so what did you get what did you get and it's like uh, damn it oh, i got to try better tomorrow yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it got us talking about it you know we, we'd share what we did and one of the biggest questions was kind of like so what in in like maybe like a week uh, a week's worth of this life so have you have you found something that's kind of like been a been a really uh, a big game changer in your in your no scores and i'm like well i i learned to put uh uh, a lot of my a lot of my veggie stir fries I was putting in um, canned tomatoes because it helped me with the sodium levels that, and things yeah. other things as well, and that 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 was a big one for me to step up two or three points and I, I learned that but it didn't really that make that much of a difference to Nikki's scores you know so the um there was always that healthy competition um, but in a, in a very very good way. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's it's fascinating how everybody's nutritional prescription is slightly different and. You need to track it for a little while, and we definitely don't. Tracking sucks over the long term for most people, and it can be a negative mind game. But for a short period to track it, 
to track your food and see what's in it and see what you need to actually optimize your nutrition at a micronutrient level. It's not a balanced diet at a macro level, whatever the hell that means, but it's a micronutrient balanced diet. So it's, it's so cool that, you know, I just love seeing it happen in real life people that are <clears throat> on the other side of the world or, or a few hours south from me. So this is so cool. Um, yeah, so how, did, how is it different to low carb? How is the, the like a, I've come from a low carb keto background and a lot of the people in the group have as well. Um, how did you find the differences from optimizing micronutrients versus just going low carb? And what results did you get that were different? The micronutrients, focusing on that. Is the, is the was the key difference for me? It was we went low carb, we went LCHF. You know, Dr. Andrea Seinfeld. We sort of learned, learned from him and a few others yep. when we first started. And it was kind of like, here's your macro targets. Mm. Get this. Stay under this for there. Stay, you know, stay. Keep your carbs low. Keep your moderate protein, but make sure you get lots and lots of fat and mm. um, keep your protein up. But you know, it wasn't protein centric. Mm. But there was no. We didn't really look at what was going on behind the scenes, what was going on in the engine um, from, from a micronutrient level. Um, you know, we, we didn't, I, it was, it was op- an eye-opening for me because going all of a sudden when you're focusing on the micronutrients, not just making sure you get high-quality ingredients, it's making sure you're not getting too much of one thing and realising where you're deficient in another. Mm. And finding that balance was such a, an important thing to, to realise that, okay, um, we were we were low carbing, and we were it was a high healthy fat, but like you've said plenty of times, it's it, you do whilst there might not be an essential uh, an essential carbohydrate as such on paper, right. there's so many essential nutrients that are in many of the carbohydrates that you would be limiting yourself by going mm. extremely low keto carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that will all of a sudden, it was kind of like, well, it's okay to put in some starchy veggies and, and increase those sort of things, especially if, you, if, you're, if you're upping your protein level. Um, yeah. And that all of a sudden, we, we watched that, that, you know, those charts that you had up there and we were watching all those blue lines creep up more across the board from the, from the lower mode. There were the, the ones where we were getting way too much, not too much, but uh, a lot of, mm-hmm. of one things, we were able to sort of dial back a bit and put those into other things by learning what micros were in various foods and discovering liver is what, <laughs> one thing that was, it was it was a big thing from beginning getting a lot of nutrients that we weren't getting um yeah and but yeah just different veggies and 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 how to cook them and and how to use them with other things and yeah that that was Good. my the big difference between uh, a keto lchf way of, of doing it where you were mainly focusing on on macros and then actually focusing on your on your micros was a big big game changer uh, so what do you, you drop from 160 kilos which is absolutely huge down to what and then you drop 10 percent of your weight during the the master class yeah um i mean my journey was um essentially when we moved down here Probably I'd lost a little bit of weight when we first moved down in the first 12 or 18 months, like, you know, just being a bit more active, chopping yeah. some firewood, but it was only a little, I think it pro- I, I would have been uh, around about the 150, 160 mark um, when we first discovered LCHF. And I never really took it seriously because I thought it was just another diet that I'm going to fail at, which is like every other diet that I've had. So, and then all of a sudden I was losing weight. Like, hey, there's something to this. So, you know, and, and over the first three months I lost 30 kilos. Wow, doing that and and realistically, and we were tracking it with um, was it My Fitness Pal? I think it was, mm-hmm. and I, that was averaging between two and a half to three thousand calories a day on a, yeah, on a high right. diet and losing all that weight. It looked yeah, great, right. but you know, and and then over the next twelve months, I lost another ten kilos and pretty much got down to a, I was stable at around about one hundred and four. I did yep. kind of creep down for about two days below the hundred. Um, but then kind of stayed around 104 for quite a few years and yep. then was back up to 116 when we started the master class. And yep. yeah, by the end of the master class, I was about 113, 103, yep. 103, 104. And as of this morning, I've 
um, 95.5. So wow. definitely happy with that. So. Wow, that, that, that's insane. Oh, I was just going to show the, um, in terms of macros, as you chase the micros, the you know, ma- uh, micronutrients and protein are, are, tend to be fairly correlated. So you're up at 41% protein for this meal at least, but that's typically what we see a lot of the time. It's not zero carb, but carbs definitely aren't high. You're about 16% mm-hmm. carbs, and then there's still definitely fat in there. You don't need to worry about not getting enough fat, but the there's a lot of complexity and nuance in, in the masterclass if you want to dive in there. But the, the big thing is just getting that protein bar longer than the energy bar when you're tracking your food. And that a lot of the benefit just comes from getting enough protein and not too much energy from fat and carbs. So, yeah. It was, it was, it was get learning the different, different ways to get protein and different ways because to, to cook, coming from uh, predominantly an LCHF background where, you know, fat is where the flavor is predominantly like that. That's yeah. a big thing going to radio. Well, the protein isn't as flavorsome. So, you know, my, my, immediate go-to would be to cook it in butter and, and add mm. lots of eggs and, and, you know, all fatty things. And, and I would want to choose fatty cuts of meat because that's, that, that's what mm. we've been doing for the last eight years. Um, but then, mm. you know, all of a sudden, you know, we're trying to make an abundance of, of what we've got around here as well. So um, mm. we do have wild game. So we've been incorporating that. There's, there was plenty wow. of dishes. That I posted photos of, of cooking rabbit and cooking venison and all sorts of stuff that come locally off our property. Wow. And as, as well as our own, you know, as we've raised our own pigs and those sort of things. So, yeah, focusing on the protein but working out ways to make it enjoyable as well um, was was really interesting. Yeah, that, that wild game is always so much leaner, um, the, the, the whole lot less fat. I've got, got some cool photos of some of your meals that you posted, but um, that looks pretty tasty. <laughs> That, that one there, that, that was the, the coolest thing because we decided to do a camping trip and we are right in the middle of the master class and thought that was the dumbest idea ever. How are we, we going to stay on target with our, with our no scores? And <laughs> that was just eggs, salmon cooked on a, on a fry pan on a, on a butane portable stove, boiled some oh. eggs, had some salad. We, we, we prepped our salad uh, for, the, for the, the whole three or four days we were there. We literally had um, Ziploc bags of, of, of everything weighed out so we knew what, what it was and we just tipped it onto the plate and cooked the, cooked the eggs, cooked the meat and that, that was it. And, yeah, we still smashed the, uh, the, the scores for, for those yeah, days and I really enjoyed it. That, that was 250 grams of salmon too because it was um, – that was, that was a meal and a half. That was, really, I'm, I'm starting to salivate now looking at that. <laughs> and so filling too, uh, yeah. at least the tidy per calorie. There's – there's another one. I mean, they, they look like robust, healthy meals without a lot of extra fat. And in terms of satiety per calorie, they're, um, they're really satiating. What was this one? It's like a, a cauliflower with... Um, yeah, that, that was... A, I, 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 um, I think I either did a tin of tuna or a tin, it might have been a tin of mackerel and just mixed it in with some um, cottage cheese and just made... That was, a, yeah. that was that, that bit on top. And it was just a, a quick stir fry with a bit of turmeric in it. It had some... Uh, some yeah. Cabbage and some cauliflower, and threw some greens on there. A bit of coriander on top, and that—that that was that one. The one before, that's actually uh, medium rare sous vide venison. Um, oh, so that wow. one there is, uh, yeah, it was cooked for about three and a half, four hours in, in the sous vide. It's fifty-four point four degrees. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that 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 was that's been uh, a big go-to for me to to get lots of very lean protein. Yeah, and it tastes great with the sous vide. Uh, we haven't got one, but one I've had sous vide meat. It's just wow, this is incredible. <laughs> but at the same time, we had um, I chatted to Karen, who actually topped it, put a lot of effort into it, but with a, a vegetarian diet. So you, mm. know, you don't have to be eating a ton of meat, but she found ways of getting protein and bioavailable protein with a, um, a vegetarian diet. Then you've got City, who's off the other end of the chart with. <laughs> She was cooking her own head cheese and getting the whole sheep and bringing it home and uh, making up head cheese and all these crazy organ meat things in Africa. I was like, this is so cool just to see how everybody all over the world finds a way to get the nutrients they need when they know what they need to chase and what foods might contain them. Um, So did you guys 
plan ahead? Did you say this is what I'm going to have tomorrow and dial it in or was it like a ha- have a breakfast and lunch and then what am I going to have for dinner that tweaks it or any any pro tips on planning and just... We just really just made sure we had um, most of the different foods here ready and mm. it was really just what we felt like mm. on the day, wasn't it? Um, cool. We didn't, didn't really plan for for future days uh it was more like at the start of the day okay what's our day going to consist of are we going to be here for lunch are we going to be should we have breakfast now and then plan for dinner and and yeah it, it was planned for each day not mm. and not any further yeah okay Chris cool. would often yes. sit down and for a long time and <laughs> map out try to map out the maximum nutrients per meal. Yeah. I kind of, I didn't go to that extreme <laughs> length. But, um, yeah, most most of the time we, we just, I mean, you've got your food list, so you make sure, you yeah. know, there's heaps of seafood on hand yeah. and watercress yeah. and <laughs> things. Oh, cool. Things that... You know, we don't normally eat that, yeah. that, you know, we did incorporate in our diets like yeah. those kinds of things and liver and just made sure yeah. we had them here ready. Yep. And yeah. we we only ever really eat real food anyway, but yeah. my tip would be get rid of all the rubbish out of your pantry and your fridge yeah. and just, just make sure you've got the ingredients there ready yeah, to go. Yeah. Are you, um, so so what, 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 what did you drop that you sort of didn't, you eliminated from your low-carb diet to do the masterclass to get such high scores and success? Fatty, fatty it, cuts yeah. of meat. It was that switch yeah. of saying protein to fat, fat to protein. Uh, yeah. Dairy, we dropped... Milk and cream, yep. um, switch to soy, soy milk because that's okay. a higher protein. Yeah, well, um, we, we love we love coffee as well, and we didn't want to give up going and, and having a coffee because it's not only just the coffee, it's the experience of going to get yeah, there yeah. and, the cafe and that type of stuff. And we went, well, a fair amount of milk that you're having, like a you know, a, yeah. a mug of cappuccino or whatever it is. So we kind of went through a few different varieties and went, no, nah, don't like almond milk in that. Don't like, uh, we, we don't. We, we generally don't do grains, so we don't do oat yeah. milk, even though oat milk actually is really nice. Um, yeah. we, we made a decision not, not to not to go down that path and and it was it was soy. So, you know, that, that's been our, uh, our kind of go-to to still have the calcium in there, um, yep. still have the protein, but not have the fat content. Yeah. So mm-hmm. after Masterclass, how's it? Change you tr- you're you're lo- still losing weight so you're pretty much doing the same thing are you or are you so you do you want to keep going you're yeah. going to join the next masterclass and keep dropping weight or what's the- yes I am yeah I'll, I'll- <laughs> you know, but no but, um, we were saying in the car on the way here it was just like for me it was my my goal for the masterclass after probably after the first three weeks and then realizing that you know. What, what it's all about and how it's all, how it, all, all the nuts and bolts are working was yeah. to put in and yeah, like as Nikki said, I did sit there for maybe an hour um, yeah. prior to making dinner and tweaking and hypothesizing on uh, on on ingredients. To tw- if I remove twenty grams of this and add fifteen grams of that, how will that change my nose score for the day? Will it get to ninety seven or ninety eight? You know, and but it, and it was painful. It really was. Uh, I mean, you. you you enjoy it occasionally, but like when it's every day. But the goal was do it, learn the way the different foods interact with your overall score. Yep. With the goal of at the end of it, eyeball. And yeah. that's what I've been doing yeah. since. I don't think I think I tracked what, that that fish loaf that I, I made a post on. Um, I think I did. I, I tracked that into chronometer. Was the first and only thing that I've actually added in. And yeah. then I had to add it twice because people were like, oh, can you send me that that recipe in Canada? So um, I actually added it as a recipe because it was re- really good. But I was just curious to see what it what it turned out. And I think it, 
it, it turned out to be a, a 95, 94, 95 wow. score just for that meal. Cool. Um, so, but other than that, it's been mostly, I uh, went down that path of getting really anal about the, the micronutrients and the macronutrients and the levels of everything so that I don't have to afterwards. And yeah. that's what we've been doing. I mean, my, my, my thing was try and get your 95, 96, 97s. I think I've got 199 in there uh, in the last week. Yeah. With the goal of if, if at the end of it, if I could, if I could eyeball a day and be above 80, mm. I, mm. that to me is, is a, a big achievement in, yeah. in overall health and staying on something, you know, being able to yeah. stick to it and make it not be painful because I still want to enjoy food. And yeah. I've been able to do that. You know, I'm still, I lost a, a, another eight kilos since the masterclass and wow. I really haven't tracked anything. I just, from That's what I learned insane. in the masterclass, I was able to just go with throwing something together quickly and sitting down and enjoying a meal rather than having to go, oh, that was painful. <laughs> but it's worth it. What, once you've been through that process of what you've done to understand what's in your food and how to plan your food and how to create a nutritious meal, you're never going to forget that. You'll never, and any time you start, your weight creeps up, you'll go, I know what to do to get back on track. I know exactly, precisely what to do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so um, Kelly Buckley asked, what did you learn that you continue to do today? Um, I suppose you just continuing to lose weight but uh and you've lost you, you've learned how to do it so you don't need to keep on tracking it which is really cool is there anything else that from the master class that stuck with you that you keep on keeping on prioritize protein yeah <laughs> you know build every meal around protein yeah yep yep yeah, well, um, trying to trying to get your head around and understanding oxidative priority Yes. is a big yeah. thing. Uh, understanding there's different types of energy that you've got and the body will choose in a different or in, in, in a specific order which ones mm. to choose first. Mm. So when, when you start, when you understand that concept, you realise, okay, I'm going to eat this. If I eat that, this is how my body will, will take mm. it. So... Yeah, and, and the, the nub of that is, you know, you don't want to have fat and carb at the same time because your body just can't burn off both at the same time and your blood sugar and insulin are just rising forever and take forever to come back down. You've just got a glut of fuel in your system that it can't get rid of. But, um, mm. you yeah, know, sticking to one extreme or the other tends to help and, yeah, that's where blood sugars come in to help you fine-tune it. But, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um so top tips for somebody starting out, what would what advice would you give of uh, if this all seems a bit overwhelming and hearing that you spent an hour trying to dial in that perfect meal? <laughs> I, I, got, I got that point. I got that extra point. It was, it was worth it. <laughs> just, I think just take each day as it comes. You know, you've done, I take my hat off to you, Marnie. You've done so much work and each day is just mapped out for you there's so much information but don't try and overload yourself with it just take mm. each day as you know in in the no program mm. um you know there's heaps of tips and mm. um yeah what and even if you just get the hang of prioritizing protein in week two, you yeah, get so many yeah. benefits just from that. And if you go everything else is overwhelming and I'll have to try it next time. Yeah. You just get a lot of benefits just from dialing and getting that, that green protein bar longer than your yellow energy bar and everything else yeah. tends to fall into place from there and everything else just icing on the cake and fine tuning from there. And it's a journey. You know, yeah. food life help is a journey don't yeah. just try and do it all at once yeah yeah we want you to learn a whole a whole lot of things that you can then take and apply later and continue to improve and refine and get to a s sustainable point not you don't have to always live it you can't live it 
100% nutrient optimizer yeah. score yeah. all the time. But if you hit it, you'll, you'll never forget it and uh, you, you'll take it through. Yeah. Um, I think, I think yeah. one of the main things for me would, would be to say to people, open your mind a bit or a lot, really, um, and look at it Look at it at I'm, there's a lot of things that I may think right now based mm. on my past experiences with diets and food and health and weight and everything else. Just take it all in and not be too... Uh, convinced that you, you you've already got the, the, the right answers or whatnot just be open to to it, it's such a new concept as well like mm -hmm. we, we found that with low carving as well people were just like oh you can't mm -hmm. do that that's just not right but if you if, you, if you're more open towards it I think you it, it will make, it make a lot more sense but also being changing your mindset to away from thinking about it as a diet mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's not a it's not a thing where you do the master class and then in six weeks' time you go, Great, I've lost weight and then what? You know, most diets are you've got a goal and you reach that and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, see you later. Whereas when you when you look at nutrition, it's a life thing. It's what yeah. changing the way you look at food and the food that you eat forever. Mm. So and that's what I love about the, the concept of being dietary agnostic. If you, you don't get told how you eat specifically. Yep. You have your own ethics. Yep. You can have your own ideas. Yep. Understand the nutrient side of everything and do it your yep. way. And it's yep. it's that, and then you can continue to do that. Uh, yep. So you know, so. And yep. try new foods. Mm. Try those different things yep. on the food list, like <laughs> watercress. <laughs> yeah, cool. I've never had that before in my life. Some of them you might like, some of them you might not, and that's okay. Yeah. You've learned something yeah. new. You might find a new food that you love and some of the less optimal ones fall off the bottom of the list and you move on. Yeah. Um, so non-scale victories, what, how do you feel? What's different in terms of how I you feel, feel before and after this? Really good. And a lot of people have commented on how well we both look. Mm -hmm. Um just feel really good wow. and my knees are really grateful because they're you know now carrying 12 kilos less than wow. they were at the start of the year so wow. that's good for me that's awesome yeah i mean it, it kind of feels like a bit of a scale victory in a way it's sort of all about weight loss but being able to just find clothes in the cupboard that i've pushed to the back because i don't fit into them anymore that i'm now all of a sudden fitting into and to the point where i'm like let's actually feel a little big for me now you know and it, it's nice to pull out the, the those types of things putting another notch in your belt um yeah a second, a second notch in your belt and yeah. things like that and yeah and and ha having people notice it that yeah. and not just the weight loss but your general your aura your, your color your your, mm. your outlook and people I, I've, I've had a couple of people say about nikki she said said like i can see it the shine in, in her eyes you know mm. it, that that spark that brightness that people that people notice just as much as someone says oh have you lost weight they're actually mm. noticing uh, a, a change in the in things like that like your know, skin tone and, and and the sparkle in your eye and those mm. sort of things which is something you can't get from stepping on a scale mm. yeah you can lose weight eating the same crappy food and you'll be ragingly hungry and you'll feel low energy and just want to binge on the donuts as soon as that challenge is over. But if you turn it into giving your body what it needs to thrive, it's a whole different perspective on nutrition and diet. And it's just, yeah, I just love seeing it happen in real life people. Um, it's really cool. Yeah. So um, t tell us about, I'm, I'm really passionate about regenerative agriculture and just nutrient dense food and you're growing it. What are you doing to, to nourish your body rather than other than just you know buying spinach from the supermarket that the food you get from your farm that you grow or your neighbors grow must taste completely different to what you might get in a, in a frozen packet or something tell us about that mm, definitely um to eat seasonally is just there's so much more flavor mm. in food that's 
that's fresh, you know. Mm. It's, it's actually fresh food. Mm. Um, and, yeah, you know, we, we follow, we live like a permaculture style mm. life. Mm. Um, so, you know, we have animals in mm. our system. Mm. Um, Seasonal and local. Um, yeah. And, and knowing not you don't have to grow it all yourself, you know, if, if mm. you've got people that are out there that grow food, you, getting to know your, know your growers as well, you know, mm. knowing their practices, knowing what they do. Mm. Um, rather than, yeah, just going to the supermarket and grabbing some uh, so a trolley full of veg, you, you, mm. you're much more connected to your food mm. by either growing it yourself or as much as you can. You can't grow everything. And even even you and, you and your neighbours can't grow everything. And if you live in suburbia, everyone could go out and buy a book called Retro Suburbia and do a permaculture lifestyle on the balcony, which is a great book if anybody wants to buy it. I'm not, I'm not on commission, so uh, that's, that's all good, but... Um, it's a great it's a great book to, to learn about how to do permaculture on a small scale in, in yep. small houses and balconies and that type of stuff as well. But you can't do it all. But if you can do it more so where you can, go to farmer's market. Go to your local farmer's mm -hmm. markets and get to know the people that are growing that, uh, you know, they might, they might have a property that might be 20 or 30 k's away from where you are, which is much less food miles than... The, the stuff that's trucked into the supermarket that's probably mm. come from next door, gone up to a depot in Brisbane, down to Tasmania, then back up to a depot in Sydney to be delivered. Um, and it's three weeks old and tastes yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, the, the, the apples that have, that have had a, a chemical spray to, to, uh, to make, it, make them store longer and, and all these types of things, you know. Yeah. So if, if, you, if you get to know those types of things and how they're grown and make, make – quality food important to you, it, it really makes a difference to the nutrients you get in, in, yeah. the, in, the, in the long run. And the food you're eating now must taste radically different to what you're eating when you're living a suburban life at the shopping centre or the fast food place in Sydney to what you're eating now. And, and, and getting in tune with seasonality is, is, a, is a big thing. Like yeah. I never really understood it till we moved down here. Like all of a sudden... When it comes time for tomato season, I am craving tomatoes. But then when it's mm. not tomato season, I'm like, I don't wow. really feel like it. And then Probably of, over it by then. <laughs> very likely. But, um, you know, but you, whereas previously it would be like you could just go down the supermarket and get a bag of bag of tomatoes and you're done. And then all of a yeah. sudden winter comes along and your brassicas are in, so you've got uh, cauliflower, you've got all those types of winter veg, and I'm just craving those. And oh, then, when, you know, and, and when certain fruits are on, so, you know, citrus comes in at different times of year to when the stone fruits come in, it's different types of year to when the apples come in and, you know, all those types of things. So getting in tune with seasonality and being able to understand how that interacts with your nutrient intake as well, mm. like... Um, what, I, what I'm looking forward to the next 12 months is eating this way but picking the foods that I'll put into a, into a dish based on mm. what's, what, what's growing, what should be growing this time of year. You know, um, if, when it is cabbage season, we'll do lots of dishes with cabbage. Um, mm. when, when it is when it is broccoli and brassica season, we'll do that. You know, when it, when it is, when it is in, in – spring and there's lots of leafy greens we'll do lots of leafy green dishes and salads and, and luckily tomatoes and and cucumbers down here probably everywhere else as well tend to come on at the same time which are great to do salads mm. with the greens so going seasonally makes it makes a big difference and learning how to pick not just your optimal 30 but your optimal 30 when they're optimally needed needing to be grown yeah and, you know um yeah. Anyone can grow anything with, with the right uh, factory and polytunnel and heating and, and all that type of stuff. But if it's not, the, the, the best quality food comes from when it's grown when it wants to be grown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've got this, like at the moment, food is controlled by six or nine companies that, uh, you know, everything is fueled of fossil fuel fertilizers grown in large monocrop situations and like you said trucked across the world and sent to thailand to be packed and sent to sweden and then sent back to australia or whatever and it's just crazy the amount of food miles it's traveling and how dead that food is by the time it gets to you and 
how the nutrients are depleted, so they have to try and fortify it, and it just doesn't taste alive anymore. But if you get people not just chasing the foods that contain more nutrients, but the foods that are locally grown in season and taste amazing because they actually contain those nutrients right now, like you said, they're fresh, they're amazing, and even better if, if they're local and they're not part of this massive agribusiness sort of setup that they'll be regenerating the earth when you mix plants and animals together that they'll actually regenerate the earth rather than you know deplete and and and, and um, you know take everything out of the earth and, and it'll be a better place to live in 100 years rather than just continuing to suck all the nutrition and the, and the life out of our planet for us to live it'll you know we can we can invest in a way that of eating that will help us to grow the planet back to life sort of thing and re reverse what we've done in the last 50 years so yeah what you guys are doing is amazing living on a, a farm to to grow that food yourself and and you're thriving so it's, it's so exciting cool anything else you guys would like to leave everybody with thank you so much for doing this any any w final words of wisdom from chris and nikki that pretty much covers most of the <laughs> um, yeah just eat real food yeah yeah and and uh, enjoy food that tastes amazing naturally because it is good for you so yeah and yeah. you'll love it and you'll Have thrive yeah cool just yeah. fun okay. don't make it a chore yeah Cool, cool. Thanks so much for doing this. It's great. And um, you're going to get back to your pigs and your farm and uh, picking out two, two pigs tomorrow. So I'm going to go out and slash the paddock and just get the uh, get them all ready and prepped. So the little bit, they are about eight weeks old. So um, yeah. picking those up tomorrow. Bacon and, seeds. Um, yeah, bacon seeds, basically. <laughs> how, to, how to grow your own pigs? Buy bacon seeds. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. On that note, yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> it's been so much fun. Thank you.